your teachers. Thank you for your patience. Kindly stay muted. And we will be starting exactly by 3 p.m. Thank you for your patience, your teachers. We'll be starting another five minutes.
dear teachers, uh, if you have any issues logging in to Zoom, you can always uh, uh, log in and connect with us through YouTube link that is already shared with you over the mail or in your WhatsApp group.
thank you dear teachers for your patience and for uh, having uh, been waiting there patiently and we are about to start the session now and uh, a very good afternoon to all dear teachers educators principals and uh, all dear ones who are gathered here and uh, this is your host today i'm vinolan from techno school so i'm very happy to welcome you all uh, to this uh, webinar uh, of techno school so this is our fifth webinar in the series of webinars that we are handling and along the topic dealing with the global experiment we know that we are all dealing with a global pandemic and uh, uh, hope all these sessions that uh, if you had attended earlier uh, are truly beneficial for you and this fifth uh, webinar in this uh, series on my interactive classroom will definitely uh, give you a helping hand in handling all your online classes and your online sessions uh, with ease and that you will be able to uh, uh, lead your way to a better learning. So I uh, wish that this session really helps you to equip yourself and uh, uh, in molding uh, the students and uh, becoming better people. So we will uh, move on for the agenda of the day. So um, this is the agenda for this session today. So moving on to the general instructions, and uh, um, we wish that all uh, participants, all teachers stay muted throughout the session. And for any technical queries or difficulties that you are facing uh, in connecting through Zoom or in having our session uh, uh, in live on YouTube, you can definitely contact our, uh, our technical person, Mr. Samuel Martin, his uh, mail ID and his uh, telephone number is on the uh, screen, you can uh, call him uh, for any help. Uh, so uh, uh, for teachers who are connecting and getting disconnected again or having any technical issues, uh, kindly get yourself connected on YouTube. Uh, our session is uh, presently going live on YouTube, so you can definitely uh, connect there if you have uh, troubles with Zoom. Uh, so. Uh, um, and some, some of the instruction is that after our uh, uh, session is over, we will have the question answer session and uh, you can definitely post your questions uh, to the host in the chat box. And uh, um, some more instructions are you can always uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more notifications of the webinars and live sessions that will be coming up from our way. Uh, so, uh, and a very important note on the feedback session as well. Uh, a feedback uh, form will be shared at the end of the session, uh, wherein you have to fill in the details and the questions asked in it and submit it for uh, the online certificates that you will be receiving in a couple of days from today. Uh, so once again, uh, uh, dear teachers, stay muted throughout the session, and uh, um, I hope and wish that you are all benefited by this session. And uh, next, moving on to a small short introduction about Techno School. You, all of you know that who have attended our uh, previous uh, webinars, Techno School is an ICT education provider uh, which has a 15-year experience in providing quality ICT education to a uh, a vast audience across the globe. So our main vision is that, that we always bridge the gap between uh, the IT industry and uh, uh, the ever-changing ICT technologies and the ICT world. So we are uh, very happy in reaching out to so many teachers and students across the globe uh, in helping them meeting all their uh, needs in this world that is getting updated in so many technologies in, in all ways uh, it is uh, uh, changing. So the ICT world, though it is changing every day, the principals, the teachers, the educators need a helping hand and we are, we are always there to help them, support them so that they equip students for a better tomorrow. So as you all know, uh, we started our journey back in 2005 and uh, till 2020, we have 800 plus customer schools across India and across the UAE as well. Uh, we have expanded our territories 
to the UAE as well with a strong hold therein. And uh, uh, we are catering to different uh, curriculums across uh, the globe, international curriculums, the CBSE, ICC, and various curriculums. So uh, we are always happy to help every school that needs a hand in the ICT sector. So, and apart from uh, providing this, we also help uh, teachers specifically in providing technical sessions and technical workshops for them uh, to keep themselves updated with the latest technologies and to handle students in a better way. And uh, for students as well, we are giving motivational sessions and career-oriented seminars so that they can uh, mold and see their future in a better way. So apart from, so as you can see that I already mentioned that we are 15 years in this business and we are serving about 6 lakh happy students. And we're very happy and humbled to um, statistically provide these details before you. And we also have the other service, which is the te Techno Talent Fest that we uh, conduct across India and in the UAE as well. It is a platform where uh, we identify the uh, tech geniuses of our uh, 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 in the IT world. There are kids who can uh, uh, really compete in great levels. So uh, we, we are happy that every school and every kid has a platform to exhibit their talents and, uh, and uh, uh, that they'll be able to show themselves up in a better way. And these are a few clippings and uh, uh, from the Techno Talent Fest that was conducted last year in uh, the UAE and in India. Uh, and uh, do follow us on social media, uh, in Instagram, Facebook, on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. Also subscribe to our channel. And coming to today's session on my interactive classroom by Ms. Uh, Sharon Theodora. So we are very happy that uh, uh, we are having this session, which will be dealing with a, a very helpful and a very educative uh, uh, knowledge base that we will be uh, having through this session. And uh, uh, this session will be uh, handled by our technical trainer who has uh, many years of experience as a life skill trainer as well as a technical trainer. So uh, I welcome Ms. Uh, Sharon Theodora, who will be uh, handling this session from henceforth. So she'll be handling a session on how uh, uh, interactive you can make your classrooms and how you can uh, really encourage collaborative learning in your classroom. So your classrooms, may you have a platform to take online classes, but still uh, you feel really the children are not uh, much interested in your session. So there are a few tips and tricks and few tools and uh, so much, much more in a bundle of badges and rewards and how you can really entertain your students in your online classes. And here uh, comes a lot of tips for you to take home and uh, make your online sessions more interactive. And uh, now I hand over the session to Ms. Shadow. Thank you, Vinolin, for that warm welcome. Uh, teachers, I hope all of you can uh, hear my voice loud and clear. Well, I see the number of participants going up as we speak. Um, so, today's session, can I please be access to share my screen? Thank you. My interactive classroom. Uh, we will start the session by splitting it up into portions. 
the understanding what our difficulties are and what are the differences that we have in our classroom from the traditional way that we used to take. All right. And the, here is a speaker. The differences from a traditional class to a virtual class that we are handling now. And then there will come the solution. This is not textbook solution. So these are just suggestions. Based on the solution, you can customize your own solutions. Okay. So for each solution, we will try to support you with tools and uh, technique. And we'll uh, finally summarize the session. And if at all there are questions, we will we are extremely happy to take the questions. All right. Differences and difficulties. So this is not that we are not used to such classroom, though we have been doing it uh, under, though we are uh, conducting these classes under lockdown in virtual room, this was not what we are trained for. As teachers, we were, we were initially trained to have a traditional method of class where we will have a, a structured ball and a teacher, a students in front of us. Um, each student will be different in their behavior or their interaction will differ from teacher to teacher or teacher to student. Okay, I've just listed a few uh, difficulties, the differences and the difficulties that come along with the differences. Okay. These uh, differences and the difficulties are listed uh, based on the feedback that you gave us in the past sessions. This is the fifth session in the series of dealing with the global experiment as Renolin rightly pointed out. From the previous sessions, we did co collect feedback from you, right? So based on those feedback, we read the feedbacks, we value your feedbacks a lot, and based on those feedbacks, we'll come up with these differences and uh, difficulties. Timing and places. All right. As I told you, we are not uh, used uh, to this type of classes. The place is different. The students are in their own home. They are at their comfort level. And we teachers are fish out of water. We were fish out of water in June or July when the school started, right? And uh, time, the time that we, uh, we battle with time, I would say. Initially, we had eight periods, let's say some seven hours in the school. And uh, now the time is uh, cut down to four hours or maximum three hours. And within the three or four hours, we have to efficiently or effectively deliver our content to the students, make them learn, encourage them to learn, encourage them to understand and participate in the class. So the time is, has played an important role. We, uh, have, we have got less time in our hands. And uh, the place that we are at has, has a lot of distractions. Not everybody has their own corner of uh, space to attend a class or teach their class. So there's a lot of distractions. Right, the next when teachers and students interaction, this has changed as well. Um, initially, we take a lot of time. Uh, we would have certain free, free periods. We allocate time for certain students to come to us or give them uh, special attention. So such activities does not happen in this virtual classroom. Class control, definitely. This is a challenge for us teachers uh, because the students are in their own uh, comfort level. They not all, I would say, but few students, uh, we struggle to gain their attention, right? So class control is a challenge. Uh, the class rules have changed. So in the traditional uh, setup, the students will uh, raise their hand if they have to walk out of the class. But uh, in this virtual uh, setup, they walk from the desk with their phone. They walk up and down the house. So the classroom rules have changed. Initially, in the traditional uh, setup, if just the presence of the teacher in the classroom will make a lot of difference. We would know, uh, based just listening to the sound, we will know whether the teacher is present in the class or not. But in the virtual classroom, that is not a thing. So we, uh, we have lost, I would say, the class control thing, and we are trying to gain, and we want to gain that control over the class. Medium of instruction, yes, definitely. So the traditional method is a chalkboard and a whiteboard, interactive whiteboards we had in our schools. And now we there are changes in the way we teach our content, take the content to the students. 
So solving queries, and it, it, you right, you teachers understand from the point I'm trying to tell you, right? Resolving queries and assigning work is also a, a, a major difference, and there are difficulties related to this as well. So these are the difficulties and the, uh, the differences that we picked up from your feedback. So we thought this would be a right time for us to address these with some tools and techniques. So for the day's session, uh, yeah, solution, the solutions will come along with some tools and techniques. So the solutions that we provide are not textbook solutions, like uh, these are not theorems. We just suggest you some solutions. So depending upon uh, so how effective you think it will be for your particular uh, school, let's say if I'm in Bangalore, the solution that I provide to you, you can tailor it in a different uh, way. If you're in Chennai, the, the students, um, the classroom will differ, right? For each, from place to place, the students and the uh, teaching methodology will differ. So we have kept that in mind and we have come up with a solution so you can customize it or tailor it according to your needs, okay? Ah, this is how it's gonna go. So in the solution part, we have uh, again segregated into three categories. So we have compart compartmentalizing. So we are making uh, sections or we're dividing the session into parts. So first is expectations. So what do we expect? Behavioral expectations and academic expectations. The next is engaging our classroom. How do we engage our students in the classroom, the online virtual network, and how do we engage our students in the classroom? We, uh, under that, we are talking, we're gonna talk about interactive mediums, skill-oriented activities, and individual and uh, group works. So now under creating interest, and this is where we are, uh, this is where our interest, interest lies, and how do I spark that, or uh, how do I create that interest in my students so he or she can, do their work on their own. Rewards and consequences. So these are the topics that we're going to discuss for the day. Expectations, right? Now, set basic rules. Follow the routines, okay? That is the first thing that we'll have to do. Never let it be a virtual classroom or an uh, traditional classroom we will have to establish rules. We will have to set basic rules and follow the rules. So if we take the first step of following the rules, we definitely will see our students taking the effort to follow the rules as well. Okay, so when I talk about rules, what are the rules? General, normal rules that we have in our class. Talk only in your turn. Stay mute, like unmute, uh, because we're talking about virtual classrooms. We expect the students to follow these rules and unmute yourself only when you are requested to do so. Listen to the instruction, follow the symbols. So we give instruction to a medium. So there can be also symbols. For kindergarten students, we use symbols. And for primary students also, it can be effective, right? Then raise your hand. If you have to talk, you raise your hand. Let's say if you have a class in Zoom, we will see constant hand symbols on your screen in the chat box, right? Sitting posture, right? So if we correct ourselves in these aspects, we can... So uh, this was not the... ...one of the teacher if they have to leave. But uh, since it's uh, off online, uh, they take the liberty of walking around with the uh, gadgets in and around. So, we will have to instruct the students, even in that case, let it be an online classroom. Let's follow these rules. We will try to make these rules along with the students. We tell them, we get their approval and say, see, we have laid these rules, let's follow them. And uh, let's keep a note that we follow them. Okay, net equips. This is a basic, uh, this is a very important uh, topic. We ask our students to do their projects or assignments or even their own works. On, online, so like we assign it to them, we want them to get uh, get back to us through the digital medium, right? So typing, how should they type their uh, projects or their assignments? Images that they take, appropriate images, video presen presentations that they make, how appropriate should it be? It should have proper lighting and proper setting backgrounds. So it's okay, 
uh, even with a very minimal uh, availability of resources, students can make a very good presentation. Typing, we will have to instruct the students that. So when you type, don't type all caps. So when you type all caps, it suggests a reader that it's a rude message. So whenever there is a necessity and the requirement, we can they can take all type letters. So these are small things that we'll have to, uh, rules that we have to play, all right? Be a team player, help your peers, you help your friends. So these are behavioral expectations that we will have to lay down. It does not matter even if it is a traditional classroom or online classroom, we should lay these rules and make sure that our students follow. How do we make sure that our students follow? Let's just, uh, just us telling these rules does not mean that students would follow it, right? So we can encourage them with, encourage them with badges and uh, uh, dig digital badges, which we will talk about later. As you saw on the, the front screen, th there is a session on digital badges. So we will talk about that, okay. Academic expectations, keeping time, following the schedule, do not exceed the deadline. These are basic academic expectation that we should lay. Submitting your work without fail. See, we'll, yeah, we will talk about this when we get to the academic part, but still, uh, we're just setting a foundation. We're just setting expectation. As a teacher, this is what I expect from you. And as a student, I will, uh, that there might be few uh, expectations from yourself. I will try to fulfill that. So we come with a, we sign a, a struck a deal. We'll strike a deal there. Okay. Plagiarism, yeah. Uh, with a vast availability of online resources, there is a lot, a lot of chances for plagiarism, like copy pasting the assignments or work. So we should encourage our students not to do that. It is okay if it's only two or three lines of inference or assignment that they did. Let's encourage them with that. Let's uh, tell them that plagiarizing is bad, right? Academic goals, yeah. This is what I was supposed to tell you. Let's divide our goals into smaller bits so that we can achieve it, right? Don't hesitate to try it. Okay, so here are a few uh, tools. As I told you earlier, when we suggest a solution, we will try to accompany that with a tool because we're going to have our classes online or in virtual manner, all right? Classroom screen. This is one tool where you can have your uh, expectations. We have set few expectations, right? Where we can meet our expectations online. All right, uh, let me get to a different page now. All right, uh, in your Google, you can search for classroom screen. This is a free software. So if you can see my uh, URL, the address, it says uh, classroomscreen.com. This is a free software. You can sign up to store your uh, uh, stories or you can just access for the for uh, regular classrooms, okay? Even if you don't, uh, sign up for storing, you can actually save it as image, fine? So it's a free software, it's available on uh, net, so you can try to make a use of it. So what does this software do? How can this software help me to lay my uh, rules and regulations? How can I uh, set an expectation with this software? And these are, uh, we do have uh, groups, right, in our classroom, we, divide, we try to divide our class or into sections where they can work on their own, or uh, we want to ask a question. We ask a question and we want a particular student or a random student to answer. So if we ask a student to answer, we have this tendency of all students will put their all students will uh, put their hand up to uh, answer, right? So let's just see this. The first option is this option. The first option will help you to call student student in a random. Okay, I do not have a list. You can have a list of student typed in your word or your uh, 
let's say notepad you can copy paste so i'll try to make it along with you will take half a minute okay tina tim tom i'm just trying to create a list of uh, names okay so if you have already uh, if you already have a list in your word or your uh, uh, notepad you can copy paste here so once you are done you click choose if you are asking a questions the system will all automatically pop up a name so my first name is theo it has decided to call theo to answer the question so only theo will have to unmute his system to answer okay let me try a different name okay this time it's tom or tina's chance to answer a question so we can try to avoid chaos in a classroom okay all right so let's say there are various tools you can explore i will try to introduce the software to you and just uh, explain two or three uh, tools so this is another one that that has dice in it probabilities we are teaching probabilities in max probably we can use this or let's say i have six teams i can throw two dice to call a team to present their activity so let's say i'm dividing my class into six and each team is ready with a presentation which team shall i call first let me throw a die and let me figure out which team goes first and this time it's the team two okay you can have two dice or three dice depending upon the need and there are a lot this particular tool also acts as a whiteboard but since we are talking about setting expectations let us stick to talking uh, expectations okay i want silence all right uh, let's say work together now this is a group activity work with your group or let's say this is an activity where you'll have to ask your neighbor all right you can you can use symbols and instructions as i told you earlier okay now it's time for you all to be quiet and i will conduct my class okay if you don't want uh, symbols we can we have uh, signals so if it's green you can talk or if it's red it's only the teachers talk if it's yellow it's a class discussion so there are a lot of activity uh, tools here that you can use timer so you can set timer for your activities so classroom screen is an option where you can maintain or set your classroom expectation all right let me get my get me back to your uh, screen all right google jamboard this is another tool where you can uh, the tool that you can use to maintain discipline in your classroom set academic expectations all right let me talk about academic expectations with google jamboard if you are a school who, are, who is already in, uh, like you're already into google jamboard and you're using google jamboard good well and good okay so you uh, select google jamboard in your uh, i'll just show you how you do that in your in your google you select jamboard since the, this will be the page that you will see when you click jamboard you will get into your page which i have already signed in with just a blue google account you can get into your jamboard page so i i'm going to create a new jamboard so this would be my slide so i can uh, instruct my students here let's say i'm going to use a sticky note saying let's just use a color okay okay number 1 or yellow means the students are to maintain silence number 2 or like if it if the sticky note turns green they can have a group discussion these are basic rules it does not mean that you have to follow the same instructions or same colors you can design it according to your you can, you can tailor make it according to your own needs these are these are just suggestions for you to just make a note of all right all right so once we have done with our instructions let's get to classroom engagement interactive medium so what do we uh, why do we need this interactive medium 
constant monolith if, if it's a monotonous talk it's only the teacher talks and the students don't get to participate in the classroom they definitely will get bored up and they will lose their interest in the subject or even in the class and we cannot we cannot blame the students for that right so what do we do in the interactive medium as i told you earlier this classroom screen and uh, uh, google jamboard can be used as interactive medium and also as uh, also can be used to set your expectation with your students correct right? breaking a section into smaller segments is very important i tell you why so let's uh, say my we have a lesson plan right lesson plan or uh, the lesson plan it is called i guess all right we have a lesson plan let's uh, divide our lesson plan into two or three segments or let's make it a four segments all right and in the first segment we are introducing our topic in the second segment we are giving an activity and in the third segment again we are getting back and we are having a group discussion on their activity and the fourth segment we try to conclude and uh, jot down the learnings so if you segment your class into sections we can identify where a student lacks and where he or she is shining all right there will be students i'm not telling you that are students with uh, difficulties to learn but there can be students who who will have certain difficulties understanding certain concepts so if we segment our class into sections we will know which segment is the child in the second segment or the third segment so that we can address and um, help a student to come online whiteboard yeah whiteboard classrooms images you can use uh, videos virtual aids that's google earth if you're a history teacher you can use google earth to go to different places and jog jog it right you can go go to different uh, sites so uh, virtual these are just uh, tips that we uh, the another tip is you can take a virtual tour there are uh, museums and uh, historical places that offer virtual tours to you so if you look into their uh, um website you will be able to find for example let's say the san diego zoo in us they offer a virtual tour so if you just type san diego uh, zoo and on the on the list you can search for their site and if you get into the site it's a free it's a free of cost uh, virtual tour you can take your students to see the animals on that zoo that's tiger that's penguin that's giraffe i i i recently took a virtual tour in that right so there's also this aquarium in georgia that that uh, gives an uh, opportunity to take your student to virtual tour so since we cannot walk out of our rooms or our houses we cannot go to our schools we can we we have internet in our hands we can take virtual tours google earth is also another uh, tool that you can take your students on a virtual tour it's only the teacher will have the uh, screen shared as we move the screen the, the students will see our screen to uh, see the to or like you, you understand what i'm trying to tell you right okay pop quizzes were pre recorded sessions we we do that we write we tend to pre record our sessions so we can send a list of questions so based on uh, like after listening to the video the students can write their answers okay these are uh, simple techniques flip model and uh, mind map flip model is what i explained to you uh, segmenting your session into fragments so each fragment can be addressed individually so if you are giving the introduction you will give the next segment to the students to do their part and they will come back then we'll have a group discussion and then we conclude uh, conclude the uh, session so if if there is not a group discussion we can suggest an assignment we can ask them to do a project so they will learn a particular segment on their own so that is flipped model mind map so how do we do uh, these mind maps with the uh, our interactive whiteboards let's just do a live mind map all right so what do we do mm, let's say ancient civilization okay let's work on ancient civilization i'm using our text tool to do a mind map Edit. Civilization. All right. The ancient civilization. What are all the civilizations? Let me say Indus Valley. We'll start with the one that is very near to us. Okay. 
okay in this valley is okay chinese the yellow river chinese civilization i'm seeing a different color egyptian civilization the mayan or inca inca is a different civilization okay history teachers will be able to correct me correct me in this inca all right we'll start with by we're trying to create an interactive medium where i do the class along with the student or what i can do is i uh, once i am here at this particular stage i can leave the page or i can duplicate the page let's see if i click on uh, the top part here can this waiting room be removed from me please yeah okay so i can duplicate the page and i can allocate each page to a a uh, group so that they can work so i have duplicated i made a four of same page which i'm going to share with my students and i'm going to uh, give them let's say 10 minutes uh, to work on it and get back all right so how do i share the whiteboard there is this button that says share so when i click get link you can restrict there are uh, features where you can restrict who can see the link or who can't see the link and uh, the person who gets the link can they just view the link or can they edit the link so i want my students to uh, do the project in their from where they are so i'm going to say edit okay once i say edit the link will be an editable format so i copy paste copy the link and play, paste it anywhere so if you are using google meet you can since it's a google uh, uh, app google jambo it this does have links with uh, google related softwares so you can also use it in zoom if you are using zoom or any other platform that you are using you can just copy the link and paste it in the place it in the chat box so this when the student clicks the link he or she can open the link and start working on their own all right so mind map so who are talking about mind maps we can assign this mind map this is how we assign the mind map to a student for them to work so let let's just say okay if you want to add photos to the mind map we can get into this options of photos search for photos in the uh, search bar so this is indus valley civilization So there are a lot of pictures where is this valley civilized uh, where is it located more of what is the major river water source that was available during that time and the building construction their architecture their uh, government their governance are you you understand so that's how we create a mind map using our digital medium all right let, let's get back to our slide okay skill oriented activities so we are interested in imparting skills in our students right like collaborative skills or leadership communication skill organizing skill decision making we want them to think on their own we are a just a spark we are just trying to give them uh, just trying to pass the baton to them so that they can run their lap on their own so how can we do a skill oriented so when i say when we when we uh, uh, divide the class into groups and we assign works to them let's say i want these particular students to be a part of this group i'm just typing the same names because it's a uh, little easy for me to do that that is why okay that's tim that's tom that's tina okay these are the three students who's going to work in this particular uh mind map so i'm assigning this work only these three students can work on this page so the next page i will assign this work for a different group and on the next page and as you see you uh, as i 
click on this arrow, you can see my Jamboard moving from one direction to the other. So this page I can assign to a different group. So we're trying to impart skills in them, helping them to work as a group. So in traditional classrooms, we didn't feel this, we didn't have this problem. What we do is like, they will be already in groups. We, uh, we will ask them to, can you all get to your groups? They will get to their groups. We give them the activity, they do the activity and they come back. But in virtual setup, we face difficulty in this uh, area. So how can we, this is one way where, where like one means where we can address this area. So okay, having different jam boards. We can impart, uh, so let's say if in this page, uh, Tom will collect pictures for the uh, mind map or the assignment. Uh, Tina will collect points on it. And Tim will be the person to present the Jamboard back to us. So uh, if you're using Jamboard in a laptop, you can automatically uh, figure out, like search for the software and use it in your screen. But if you're gonna use it in your phone, you will have to uh, install Jamboard from Play Store. Okay, search for Jamboard in your Play Store, install it so that you can use it anytime you want. Yeah, individual and group works can be done with this interactive medium. So you can teach with interactive medium. So like this is one way of teaching, creating mind maps. Like you can generally also teach with, well, let me get back to my classroom screen. I told you there are other options also in classroom screen which will come handy. This one, this such screen is this draw the interactive whiteboard screen. I could use the color from here. Let's say I'm going to teach them uh, math. OX plus Y is equal to, okay, I can uh, choose to uh, use my pencil to draw, else there is this option called equate, equator. Okay, let me type that name for you so that you can uh, search on it. And we will have a separate session on this particular tool. Okay, this is the name of the tool that you can use to teach math online. All right. Equate show. Let's get back to our presentation. Okay, tools for practice. We just did see Google Classroom and Google Jamboard. Creating interest. Uh, if you're a teacher, we'll come back to the question saying, ma'am, we're doing everything that you just said, but still we're not able to uh, have the attention of a student in our classroom. What can we do then? Creating interest. So for creating interest, we can give them reward and we can uh, tell them the consequences that comes along with it. So if you get a reward, which means that you're doing a good job, if it's a consequence, uh, if it's a consequence, it means that you will have to try a little more to get a reward and you can award them digital badges, all right? Let's get back to our Jamboard one more time. You can award uh, badges in Jamboard. So once the students have done with that project, they will uh, send back, uh, the link will be on our screen. If you refresh, we will be able to see the work that they have done. So once all the teams are done with their work, we can, change the we already sent a link right we can change the link to view only so once the it's once it's updated to view only the student can't go back and make any further changes to that particular link that they have all right so once that is done the jamboard is under your control and you can give them awards and digital badges So I have a few, uh, okay, this is the one that we just did, right? Let me get back to another one.
Okay. I have assigned numbers here, numbers from 1 to 15. Uh, it goes on. So there are templates, free templates online that you can use for Jamboard. So if you get into Google and say free templates for teaching in Jamboard, you will get a lot of free templates that you can use. So you don't have to sit and uh, uh, paste all the sticky notes and number them. So there are templates. You can customize the template according to your need. So I've been talking about uh, giving them rewards, right? Okay. So this is just an example. You can make it however you want it. So students will have their roll number in class. Like I'm, ju I'm just for the use, for easy use. I've just given numbers like one to fifteen. I'll okay yellow is the color that all students will start with okay so as they progress let's try to change a color which means the student number one and student eight have done a good in, they have uh, been a good child in the class so their their color has gone to from yellow to green so you're not going to share this link so it's only you will be handling this link so you don't have to worry about the students getting into this link and uh, change the color on their own okay we're not going to share this so simple techniques such as this we can incorporate in our class to give them awards or rewards okay and that is another software that you can use to give them badges digital badges and one such software is uh, class dojo so you will have to sign up into this uh, software to give them badges and awards. Uh, apart from Google uh, Class Dojo, there are other ways where you can give them avatars or you can uh, give them uh, rewards. Uh, you can also uh, use Jamboard. Jamboard was just a suggestion. Let's get back to Class Dojo. Okay, I've already signed up as a teacher in Class Dojo, and I'll uh, explain this uh, use of Class Dojo with the help of a demo demo class. All right. So once I've uh, signed into my account, this is how my school will look like. So the name of the teacher and the number of classes that I handle. Let's say if you're a teacher, a science teacher who goes to like two or three sessions, who who's got uh, eight standard, seventh, and six B. So I, I can uh, add a new class. Each class will have their own. Uh, I'll show you how to make a new class and then explain the uh, software with the help of class demo class. All right. So if you want to start a new class, click on new class. Which grade is it? So we're talking about grade eight. OK. Uh, So once you click the grade and uh, with whom do you want this want this uh, app to be shared with, you can click on default. By default, it is parents and teachers only. And you can change it to parents and uh, then you can change it to only the don't share the points with parents. So once you have done, your uh, create class button will get enabled. And once you click that, okay, it's standard science. Create, create class button will get en enabled and I'm creating a class now. I'm gonna add my students. All right, I don't have to sit and type all the names of my students, okay? With all the work that I already have, I don't, ha don't have to add another work onto my list. So what I can do is I can directly import a, uh, the list into my, so let's say I have a list in my Word, you can import it from Word. If you have the list in your Excel, you can import it from Excel sheet. So once you have imported uh, your uh, list, let's say this is how the class looks like. So as you add a name to your class, each student will get their own avatars. Uh, this is a monster style uh, uh, avatar. So each student will get their own avatars. So how do I assign points to them? Okay, Jennifer has got a, a gray avatar and Leonard has got a yellow avatar. Okay, let me assign points to them. How do I assign points? To start off with, all students will have zero in their uh, point list. So positive and needs to work, need work. So need work means that they'll have to um, improve themselves. So which uh, which will come under the negative 
negative uh, points okay so positive points how do i add points let uh, let's say this particular student Le leonard is participating with good and participating so they get a point so there's one reward for leonard denzel denzel was hard working so denzel has got the point so with a teacher having this user account you can just show well, when you share your screen to your students they can just uh, take a look at how many points they have got for the session okay if you want to give points for the whole class you click on whole class and say that was good teamwork so all five students in my class have got a point but denzel has got two leonard has got two because of hard work and the participating in the team so these are badges that you can awards that you can give to your students may not to be always a positive award we can try to uh, regulate the behavior in, in the academics by academic wise and also a behavioral wise by giving them uh, warning negative signs also so in that case you will click on need work which means they will have to uh, these are minus points they will which will be subtracted from their original points and you bring a point down okay so let me add one Okay, talkative. Okay, this particular student was talkative, so they are not going to get a point. So it's going to be zero. When everybody else gets a point, this particular point, this particular student will get a talkative point. All right. So uh, rewards need not always be positive. They can be negative, but the negative does not mean that they didn't perform it means they can they will have to improve their work on it okay so that's that is class dojo for you all so you can explore this software uh it is there are features free features available in it it's also priced but you can make aware of the free features that they offer and the free features are more than sufficient for you all to get the interest of the child to take part in your class Okay, apart from uh, the uh, digital uh, rewards and uh, badges that we give, what else can we do? We can try to gamify a class, play gamifying a classroom. Okay, what is gamification? So generally, we know that when a child picks up a phone with an interesting game in it, we cannot expect the child to put the phone down for the next one or two hours, right? So they are glued to their digital gadgets if it got a gaming element in it. So we can make advantage of it. How? So we can apply this concept of learning into games, the gaming elements and the gaming principle. We can try to blend both together. So in this slide, in the next few minutes, we will see how we can do that. All right. So what can we gamify? So what uh, we can gamify any subject, can assign uh, gamified content in classroom sessions. So as we were talking about uh, the Jamboard session, so these gamified links can be sent to the students. You can display a timer on the screen using class screen, uh, class uh, classroom screen. You can display a timer. Let's say for the next 10 minutes, we're going to play a game. By playing the game, there will be questions incorporated along with it. They, they can try, try, try to get to the next level of the game all right so offline game assignments can be also given so if you are so worried about the student uh, not doing their assignment you can assign this uh, games as a work so that they complete their work ultimately our agenda is to make the student learn make them to understand the subject so if games works let's try games okay why do we have to give this this uh, this type of learning will uh, the attention level will be more okay they can retain the uh, retention they can uh, retain a lot of information let's if you just ask a child and just tell a game and ask a child what are all the features that you saw in the game he or she will be at the top of the voice shouting uh, it had uh, beautiful uh, 
graphics and the characters were good and the point system was good so he or she will be able to explain the nooks and crannies of the game so it re, the retention value is high and motivation and try content no student will uh, struggle it's like they will try to get to the next level and we'll see how can we do this gamification with our subject okay so the example that i'm going to share with you is a very very simple game this can be used with the primary students and as well as middle school students so as grades go i you can try a different gamification software minecraft minecraft so it's minecraft that's craft villa so there's a lot of uh, gamification softwares that you can try, try but today's session i'm going to give you a glimpse of what is gamification how do you gamify your content okay this is a very simple software that you can share with your students so there are three requests to uh, to gamify your content so what do you what do you need for that is you'll have to prepare a set of questions our teachers will were always ready with a set of questions okay so we'll have to prepare a set of questions add the set of questions to the tool that you pick share the link to the students to play the game all right let's just do that Okay. Ah, uh, Edu Candy is the software that uh, we are going to use for gamif gamifying our classroom. E D U C A N D Y. Edu Candy. So I've created an account and I'm just logging in. This is a free software again. You can use it. You don't have to like uh, pay any price to get into it. Just give me a minute. All right, I'm into my uh, screen. So once I've logged into my screen, it says "Welcome, Sharon," and uh, there are that. This is the home page. So, which type of uh, game that I want to create for my students? Is it a one-word, uh, one-word question type? Okay, we'll try to explore all three types today. All right. Okay, what role the game? Okay, it's asking asking me to create a, a set of questions to name the game and describe the game in two lines. I've already created a set, and I'll show you how to create a set as well. Okay, I've given a name for the activity. Is did you know? An answer in one word is a description for the uh, game. All right. So this is a one word, uh, like the one word type uh, quiz. So I'm gonna give word. Add a word. So the word will be added to my list. Now, I mean, okay, let's just start with six words, all right. What type of activity that I want to play? So is it a word search? So if it's a primary grade student, these uh, one word quizzes will be really useful for them. So do I want to play a, a word search or is it a hangman that I want to play or anagram? 
Anagram is just jumble word, right? Let's try playing uh, uh, what such. Okay, I'll go for full screen to play. Okay, now I'll have to search for world. So there's world. And uh, since I did only a few, I'll have to struggle. So if it's a kid, they will definitely uh, enjoy playing the game. All right, so this is how the activity works. So you can share this activity to your students. Let's get back to and try a different game this time. Okay, let's try play matching. So I've typed in the name for my activity and uh, I'm going to add a few questions. And pass. Okay, fine. Let's say we're going to um, talk about living and normal science, okay? Plants. What do we get from plants? Fruits. Okay, it's trees that gives us fruits. It's okay. Add a different pair. Zoo. Animals. So as we uh, insert a pair, we will be able to see our instruct our uh, pairs here. So once that's done, you can also have your question in form of an image. Nile is a river. Okay, there are different games that are enabled with that. So it can be a crossword game. Let's try playing a crossword. The game that we are suggesting you now is a very simple game which can be played in primary level and uh, uh, based on the difficulty of the question, the same game can be also played with uh, high school or middle, middle school students, okay? So, They'll vertical, so they'll have to search for the, the at the bottom. You see the letters are scrambled, and they'll have to cite. Just click on the letter to fill in. Nile is a river, right? Okay, so that is how the game is played. So you'll get a uh, a short glimpse of how this works, right? There are other games also. So once you are ready with the question, since this is a demo class, I'm just trying to stick with two or three uh, questions to explain how the game, the software looks, and how can how can you create a question? How can you uh, send? Okay, let's see of how to send this activity to our students. Once the questions and the game is ready, 
let's get into the game to get the link to send it to our students. As this share button, upon clicking the share button, you will be able to send the game to our students. All right. So this uh, so this particular uh, site it, it supports all possible platforms. You don't have to install it in your software. You don't have to install it in your phones or your tablets. You just send the link. The student can play the game on their own. All right. So gamification of gamification of your subject or game gamifying your class will help to gain the interest of the students. Since uh, we're trying to introduce game uh, text or the class sessions through games, let's start off with a basic level software. So as uh, we take this seminar or webinar further with the next week or the weakness, we'll try to introduce to you with different tools to gamify your class and to gain the attention of the students and give them the maximum benefit, let them get the maximum benefit of them, okay? So that uh, brings us to the conclusion, all right? So let's just uh, summarize the day's activity. So we uh, saw uh, setting expectations, setting behavioral standards, setting academic standards, and there are tools that we can set uh, that will help you to set the behavioral standards. And um, we talked about engaging a student in an online plat platform. We saw Jamboard, we saw um, classroom screen, and uh, then we uh, talked about initiating interest or creating interest in a student. For that, we saw getting uh, badges and rewards with the help of Class Dojo and gamifying your class. We saw that with the help of this uh, Edu Candy site. All right. So, so what is, we can't serve you with three fishes at day. But instead, what can we do is we can teach you how to fish. And this session was an initiative in that direction. Uh, we tried giving you tips and the techniques so that you can customize your own classroom. Thank you so much for your teachers, for your patience, patient listening. Uh, Vinolin, I hand over the session back to you. Uh, thank you so much, Sharon. That was uh, really a wonderful session from your end, and uh, it was very informative. And uh, I can see the daily struggles of a teacher, even with my daughter's class, how they really have a tough time maintaining these children and few hyperactive children and uh, a few children who are not really interested. And you really uh, pointed out many uh, useful and uh, very uh, uh, good tools that teachers can really use to uh, handle their sessions and it is really very informative hope all the teachers had uh, uh, taken note of all these uh, little uh, tips that you can take home and you can apply in your online classes and really benefit from it and uh, uh, sharon is here to answer all your uh, questions as well if you really have a few uh, uh, questions from your end uh, we know our time is running out but uh, still we are open to a few questions which you can share from your end you can post your questions in the chat box to the host. Do we have any questions, teachers? Yes, okay, I'll see a question from uh... All right, that was a question from a teacher saying, can I use this Edu Candy in a mobile phone, Android phone, right? Yes, that is possible. That is, a, that is possible. So if you share this link to your student, you, you will, uh, they will be, he or she will be uh, able to play the game. You don't have to register. Just with the link, they can play the game. They can choose to play what type of game that they want to play. So if it's a one word question, they can play either the crosswords or uh, the anagram or uh, a hangman. 
and if it's a pack questions we saw a few links right so they can play uh, tiktok so if you have more uh, certain types of games will have limitations in terms of it's a tick uh, cross cross and uh, not x's and o's we played this game right x's and o's so that type of game will need nine questions for you to play uh, so it is always better to have let's say 10 or 12 questions so that you or she can pick and choose to play what type of game that want they want to play it is possible to play these games with mobile phone so you can design these game even in your mobile phone you don't need a system to design it okay All the softwares, all the software that we suggested, uh, you can uh, have your classes. You can start your classes in. Uh, you can have the classes in your phone, in your tablets, in your uh, system. These are not uh, gadget specified. So, like, it it does not it, it does not mean that it can work only in a laptop. You can work it in all platforms. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And I think we have one more question. Like, uh, um, how can we teach math using these tools for grade four from uh, Aruna, ma'am? I guess. Okay. So as I told you, uh, math there will be uh, formulas and there will be equations that you have to teach. So. In the interactive whiteboard class, I just typed the name of the software, right? Equatio. That is one software where you can use to teach math. So just a Google signing will be enough for you to take your classes forward from them. That particular software has handwriting recognition in it. So as you write on your screen, if you convert it into a um, equation or a formula, right? So other than that, uh, you can use this uh, sticky notes. So if you are working in a, a laptop, you can type your, uh, uh, let's say it's Jamboard that we are working with and we want to teach them graph. We can take a, go from the Google images, a graph image and paste it into a, a Jamboard with the help of this uh, image pasting option. So we can use the markers and pens to draw X and Y coordinates to teach our uh, student graphs. So other than that, Equatio is one great option for you all to teach math. So if time permits and if you are going to have, I, I believe that there will be seminars such as this, helping your teachers to develop uh, technical skills in the future. So in the next future classes, we will have that specific topic, uh, subject specific software to help you all with. So but that, because you asked your question, Equatio is a very good option. Thank you, Sharon, for uh, answering our questions. So uh, I think we, uh, you were all benefited by uh, this session. So I think you can key in your valuable feedback uh, uh, in the feedback link that is uh, posted in the chat box. Uh, so you have a link, a form, which you need to fill with your uh, details as well as the questions that are asked in it and uh, uh, submit it thereafter. So, uh, only after uh, uh, the correct submission of your feedback form, we will be sending you uh, the digital certificates to your uh, mail ID. Please take note that you uh, carefully uh, type in your mail ID so that uh, there are no issues in sending you your certificates by mail. Also follow us on uh, YouTube. Our uh, YouTube channel link will be shared in the chat box as well. To subscribe to our channel. Uh, there will be a small uh, poll that will be coming up, uh, uh, a short question that will be coming up on your screen. Uh, so uh, take time to answer that as well.
I've shared the feedback link again. There was a request, I guess. So uh, uh, please uh, scroll upward in the chat if you had missed the link. So click on the link. It's a form link, so you can answer the feedback there. Yeah, I have a question. Can I get a copy of the recorded video of this? Uh, the complete recording of this session is available on YouTube. And uh, uh, our YouTube link uh, will be uh, there in your chat box in some time so that you can uh, directly click there and go and view the session completely from the beginning. If you had missed the first part of the session, uh, you can go and uh, yeah, there is the YouTube channel. The link is there in our chat box. You can just go to it, subscribe for future references, for future uh, uh, notifications of our, when we go live, you will definitely be notified. Thank you, dear teachers, for uh, answering our poll. And I see an overwhelming good response from all of you. Hope you all filled back, uh, filled your uh, feedback uh, form. Thank you all for uh, doing that, and uh, uh, you will be definitely getting your participation certificates uh, over your mail uh, in a couple of uh, days. Uh, and we uh, thank you all, dear teachers, for attending this uh, uh, webinar and for, uh, as uh, Sharon had already pointed out, and we are in the process of uh, uh, coming in with uh, more tools that will really help you in handling. Uh, uh, your exams, handling online uh, tests and uh, conducting formal assessments over the uh, uh, internet. And so we will be uh, piling up all these in our uh, next uh, uh, webinar, which will be intimated through you to mail or through WhatsApp. So uh, always uh, be looped in with us and uh, uh, thank you dear teachers for attending this webinar. And I also uh, take this opportunity to thank all the uh, teachers, principals, and everyone who had taken their time to uh, come and uh, attend this uh, webinar and be benefited by it. By it. And I also uh, thank all our executives who are at the back end who had been uh, 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 really pushing their uh, uh, efforts up to uh, make this webinar a, a big success. And uh, I also thank uh, Sharon for uh, really giving us uh, with the uh, a lot of useful uh, tips and tricks to uh, uh, handle our uh, online classes and make it more interactive, make it uh, a collaborative learning type, which is really a, a very encouraging type of learning these days. Children, when they learn from each other, it is really a, a learning which they will have in mind for a longer time. So thank you to your teachers and, and for uh, making this webinar a, a good one. And uh, this is Vinolan signing off for the day. Thank you all.